In a ductile shear zone, the U1 value, whether it is few millimeter per year or whether it varies between say 2 millimeter to 3 millimeter per year. U2 can vary, we do not know the exact number. Theta, the dip of the shear zone can vary. The pressure gradient can vary. This variation can be because of our lack of understanding of the shear zone or with time also over millions of years there can be variation of the pressure gradient in the shear zone from let us say 2 kilobar per kilometer to 4 kilobar per kilometer say at the two different geological times we know the dpdx value. Similarly, the thickness of the shear zone this can also vary because of our lack of understanding of the shear zones two boundaries. In that case the fuzzy concept in shear zone will be applied and the velocity profile which I rewrite here will be given some changes. Now I come to the case of the vertical channel which I was promising earlier. In this case theta is equal to 90 degree. One of the good examples of vertical channel is the diapirism or doming of the salts, mud etc. This channel 1 or tube 1 is inside the tube 2. Now within tube 2 a fluid 2 is filled up of this much height and inside the tube 1 this much of fluid 1 has been kept. You can see clearly that I am considering a general case the height capital H for fluid column 2 is more than the height of the fluid column 1. They can also be vice versa case. Generally speaking, I am considering that the capital H and the small h are not equal. So, in this case, the pressure difference created on the base will be given by such an expression. Imagine that fluid 1 has a density of rho 1 and fluid 2 has a density of rho 2. So, this fluid 2 is exerting pressure on the surface given by rho 2 capital H multiplied by G and in this channel fluid 1 is exerting a pressure equal to rho 1 small h and then multiplied by G. So, the pressure difference delta P is given by one and then subtracting the other. Now, we can understand that fluid 1 will move up if delta P is more than 0. If this magnitude is bigger than that magnitude then fluid 2 will push inside the channel 1 and then fluid 1 will move upward. If fluid 1 is a Newtonian viscous fluid then it will attain a parabolic velocity profile and also parabolic displacement profile. And in case of parabolic profiles I have already demonstrated discussed how to find out the expect the strain variation from this side to that side. But in case delta p is less than 0 what will happen in other words this magnitude is bigger that magnitude is smaller that means in that case fluid 1 will push fluid 2 upward. This will continue if we consider 1 and 2 these two fluids do not mix up the immiscible fluid. In that case in this case fluid 2 will move upward forming domal geometry parabolic profile if fluid 2 is Newtonian viscous and fluid 1 will keep on sinking. Do you have any geological example where there is a central portion where sinking is happening and on the surrounding domal extrusion is happening? We can think about it. The opposite case, this one is well understood process that fluid 1 moves upward extruding or what is called the diapiric movement or the domal movement of fluid 1. Now, naturally, if the pressure gradient, if the pressure difference, pressure head is 0, that means these two are equal, the fluids are in equilibrium condition. That means neither fluid 1 sinks nor it moves upward. They are exerting equal pressure, so they are in a stable condition. Now, if we look further that inside channel containing fluid 1, that means what I have drawn by the yellow color, how much is the pressure gradient that is given by 
that pressure difference divided by the h this height this can be written variously in various books as del p del h delta p divided by delta h or dp dh all meaning effectively the same thing in this case and it will be given by rho 2 h g minus rho 1 h g divided by small h. Now here I can take g common the acceleration due to gravity term outside and what remains inside is rho 2 then capital H divided by small h and then minus rho 1 this is one possible expression. But note that conventionally the diaperic models consider capital H is equal to small h to make things more simplified and if that is the case if we do that delta p by h or the del p del h expression is equal to the density difference multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. So earlier I told you that delta p by h is proportional to delta rho since the acceleration due to gravity has remained nearly the same over last so many thousands of years. Okay. Now we further consider that delta p is more than 0. That means this is exerting more pressure that is exerting less pressure and we also consider this case what the conventionally in the books textbooks have followed capital H equal to small h. If I do that then you can see that the del p del z term where is this z term coming for that you can look at this equation where you can find the del z term is there. So here z is your vertical direction the del p del z term is equal to rho 2 multiplied by g. Why? Because this is the external pressure that is trying to push the fluid upward del p del z and the dg sin theta term where is the dg sin theta term in this equation? This is the dg sin theta term this is the fluid's own pressure fluid 1's own pressure related term that tries to counteract with the flow. So that is equal to rho 1 g d is the density in our previous expression and here since we are dealing with two fluids so we consider rho 1 and rho 2. So d is basically rho 1 we know theta is equal to 90 degree for a vertical channel so sin theta is equal to 1. So therefore what I get is that our known expression of uh, the velocity profile when the boundaries are slipping pressure gradient induced flow is happening and in this case theta 90 degree and then u1 and u2 are 0. So this expression simplifies to uz simplifies to this 0.5 mu inverse then del p del z minus dg sin theta I am still writing it like that then y square minus y0 square. Now this del p del z term in this equation is comparable with the salt dome diaperic examples like this rho 2 g and the dg sin theta term is comparable with as you see rho 1 g. So therefore the effective pressure gradient given by what is written inside the third bracket del p del z minus dg sin theta this term becomes equal to delta rho multiplied by g and if that is the case then this entire equation can be written in this way the velocity profile is equal to 0.5 mu inverse mu is the viscosity of the salt multiplied by delta rho the density difference that is driving the salt diaperism salt extrusion multiplied by g acceleration due to gravity then multiplied by y square minus y0 square. Now here what is y0? So I can understand that y0 can be the diameter 2 y0 can be the diameter of the inner channel by inner channel I mean the channel that I have drawn by the yellow color. So in this way we have made a comparison between the most generalized case of fluid flow under shearing boundary and pressure gradient and the conventional textbook salt dome model. I want to repeat here that this salt dome model is very simplified and in reality salt domes can be further governed by other tectonic processes such as faulting. So we saw a simple case of salt dome extrusion and how the equation can be set up for the velocity profile but whatever we write here 
is an approximation and the way of a modular or a structural geologist is to first understand the simplest thing and then progressively increasing the complexity and try to go as much possible closer to the natural case. I am going to consider a natural situation now. I said that this channel 1 will lead to extrusion of say salt or mud whatever is there in an elliptical fashion if there is a situation when the effective pressure gradient is equal to g rho 2 minus g rho 1 and that is more than 0. But what about the weight of the extruded material? Whatever extrusion is happening here the material is basically piling up with time. This material is also exerting a pressure downward. Here what we said is an infinitely long channel and such an equation it is a bit different situation in the natural case. This length can be 10 kilometers such as the salt domes in the Hormoz and Namakdan islands in the Persian Gulf where 200 or so salt domes are there that this length can be around 10 kilometers. So it is not certainly infinite and the amount of salt that is getting extruded here certainly is exerting more pressure which will be slowing down the extrusion process. So that means this effective pressure gradient we can call as the effective pressure gradient will need some correction if we want to have more reliable, more accurate, more realistic models. So what to do? Pressure gradient rather this is the pressure gradient P dot G pressure gradient is equal to the total pressure created at time T divided by H inverse. H is the total length of the channel. I have told you right now in the diagram you see capital H is more than small h but then I told you that we are also considering simple case h is equal to h. So in that case P out T pressure divided by the height of the column so that the total pressure created that let that be distributed and due to that its own weight component so much pressure gradient can be created by the extruding salt or mud material. Salt in case of salt dome, mud in case of mud dome, nice in case of nice dome. Now what this means? P out t is such an expression that P out at 0 is equal to 0. At time 0 no extrusion has happened so the pressure produced is 0. And then at P out sometime at time t few millions of years some pressure is created by this own by the material due to its own weight. So this is the pressure gradient. So what we have to do? The effective pressure gradient which I am writing as E dot P dot G will be equal to this term and then it has to be further reduced by P out T then multiplied by H inverse. So you can see that here the effective pressure gradient is basically time dependent. Having said this it is still not perfectly matching with the natural case. What is the problem? What about the gravitational spreading and the erosion of the extruded material? We have to address that if we want to create more realistic model. We mean what do we mean by gravitational spreading? The material that is being extruded due to its own weight is going to collapse, it is going to settle and if it settles what will happen? Say this is the extruded material after a lot of time after millions of years the material can spread like this due to its own weight the material is spreading it is reducing its height. So if this much is the height and by the way this was our channel so this was our area of consideration you can see some material has gone outside the channel this means the P out T that we were calculating will not be an accurate measure. Actually with time some material is going out but at the same time also some material is being pushed inside. So it is a competition between the extrusion and the gravitational spreading. Suppose in this process material goes out progressively then this P out T also needs a correction. Some equation is required to represent the gravitational spreading and that also is to be considered with the calculation of the effective pressure gradient. As the effective pressure gradient changes, so the strain analysis can be made more accurate theoretically from the from such extrusion cases. The second problem is about erosion. Whatever is being extruded is subject to 
various weathering agents on the earth surface. So this material might get eroded. I am just showing a, a hypothetical diagram say this portion got eroded and went out. So its weight is going to be reduced. This means the pressure is going to be reduced. Which means that the P out T the way I wrote is not a very accurate one. So we can I can request the listeners who are more interested or finding interest can approach more realistic uh, model they can create by considering the gravitational spreading and the erosion into consideration. I have been talking about the strain analysis from the ductile shear zones considering inclined channel or inclined geometry of the shear zone, possible Poissoli flow etc. Those are all the ideal situation. We can compare the ideal things coming from the numerical models considering Newtonian viscous nature of the rock and the reality. So I have drawn with white chalk what is in our what is playing in our mind and in the yellow color I have drawn what is in the reality so that we can make comparison now. And what we are doing right now is a forward model. We are thinking if ideally this happens then I should get that. This is a forward modeling. Okay. So this is a case when there is a net pressure gradient or effective pressure gradient driving the fluid upward and then there is a top to left up sense of shearing acting together. So this is a parabolic velocity profile. I have already discussed that this is the vertex. We know its equation. We know the coordinate of the vertex. What will happen if this is happening in a shear zone? In that case, we can draw a line passing through the vertex and parallel to the boundary and we can separate the shear zone into two subzones. In the bottom subzone, as you see, this is the tilt of the line. So we will get the shear sense indicator such as SC fabric, mineral fish, sigma structure, delta structure, intrafolial folds, etc. giving top to the left up sense of shear. So I am using here the S fabric to demonstrate it. What is happening in the top subzone? In this subzone, in terms of S fabric, I am demonstrating that this would be the shear sense. But if you go to field and find that there is a shear zone with one sense of shear and in continuation you find you are taking a traverse in this direction and you find opposite sense of shear, it does not guarantee a velocity profile like this. There is a chance that this can indicate only if you have got it in the field, it can indicate that within this bottom subzone, this is the sense of shearing and there is in the top subzone there is another sense of shearing and there is no guarantee that they have happened together. The basic point of having a Poissoli flow or thinking in this kind of velocity profile is that these two shears are happening simultaneously. How to do that? For that structural geologist can't do much actually samples to be picked up from this shear zone boundary and let's say from here and go and date the rocks. If you find that the rocks are having nearly the same range or this rock has an age range between A to B and this rock has an age range C to D and there is an overlap between A to B and C to D. That means that at some point of time or some range of time these two shearing were happening together. The moment we understand shearing were happening together, we can think that there was a Poissoli flow mechanism. And then we can mentally match with this situation and saying that okay, there was a net upward pressure gradient possibly that has created this kind of velocity profile. I told you earlier, I am repeating, in the field we will never find a parabolic profile. No one has seen so far. If you have seen, you should report immediately. What we see is commonly the SC fabric and other shear sense indicator that I told you just now. So this is one. Now I take another example where imagine the vertex of the parabolic profile is touching the upper boundary and from my previous knowledge I can say such a profile is produced when there is a net upward pressure gradient driving the fluid upward and then there is also top to left up sense of ductile shearing. What would be the manifestation in the shear zone throughout? we will get the same sense of shearing. All these S fabric are indicating top to left up sense of shearing. As you see, since the vertex is not falling inside, so the switch in shear sense across the vertex will not be manifested. Okay. Now, if I take 
this particular example that the vertex lies outside the shear zone then also by the way in the field you can't discriminate between these two with this much of information that there are s fabric giving uniform shear this can indicate this and this okay now let's take an example in the mind that we are thinking there is a pressure gradient and fluid moving upward giving parabolic profile parabolic profile means we are thinking in terms of numerical situation what can be the nearest reality the nearest reality can be since this is a vertex across the middle of the channel across the vertex the shear sense will alter within this sub zone this top to left up sense of shearing i am showing in terms of s fabric and within the upper sub zone there is this kind of curvature which indicates a top to right down sense of shearing so this is this position this place is like a reverse fault like shearing and this place is basically a normal fault like situation remember this is not the anderson this cannot compare with the andersonian situation here in an andersonian case for a normal fault we think in certain way the principal stress axis to be oriented for example if this is the normal fault then perpendicular to that i will think there is a extensional stress axis this is not at all going to work here now to actually match with this particular flow pattern with the reality we have to be very careful as you see in this diagram say in terms of the velocity profile or even in terms of the displacement profile this line takes a parabolic pattern and this parabolic pattern attainment happens simultaneously within the bottom sub zone and the top sub zone which indicates here the date of this rock shear rock and the date of that shear rock should be the same if not the same at least there can be an overlap to give you an example what i mean by overlap say this rock is 20 to 10 million year old and this is a deformation date that has been found and here the deformation date has been found to be say 15 to 8 million year old so we can see between 20 to 10 million year and 15 to 8 million year there is an overlap of age so that will indicate that at some point of time there is a good chance that this shearing and that shearing happen together and further we see that this switch in shear sense is happening across half of the channel which will indicate that the parabolic profile has a vertex over here if that is the case we will think that there is purely poissoli flow happening and the boundaries are actually not sheared although i am showing this half arrow now it has to be removed i will start thinking that there was no external uh, shear sense that has come due to plate tectonics it is simply the flow that has happened i am repeating several times whatever i am saying is subject to many assumptions if you dig if you think more you can find more assumptions in my speech a good research paper will involve trying to see critically which assumptions are working and why whether the previous authors are supporting such assumptions this must be explained just picking up in the field shear senses and comparing with this profile will not be a good idea okay now i take a case in mind that the fluid flows down this is a parabolic profile if it is newtonian viscous what happens here across the middle of the channel the shear sense will switch so if this is the shear sense that's what i have drawn this place is like a normal fault and that place is like a reverse fault and similar to what i discussed here if the similar discussions are brought here we can say that there was no external tectonic forces that produce the shears in the boundaries even though i am drawing the shears rather these shears are produced due to a fluid flowing downward in this channel so in what way i can discriminate that there was external tectonic stresses that has created shear on the boundary this this one i can take and i can draw another case it will be good for comparison suppose this is the flow profile i have drawn with white color which means it is the in my mind and what would be the best interpretation coming out here is that across the vertex the shear sense is changing this is the shear sense downward and here it is all top going upward now these two can be compared 
they look similar in many ways suppose even the dating was done and the deformation timing the shear timing was found to be overlapping between this subzone and that subzone suppose same thing has happened here this subzone and that subzone so there is a similarity second piece of similarity is this is a normal fault like situation that's a reverse fault like situation whereas here also the this bound this subzone has got a normal fault like situation and that is a reverse fault like situation will they indicate the same thing the answer is no why because the main difference between these two situations is that here the shear sense flips across the middle of the shear zone whereas here the shear sense is flipping closer to one of the boundaries so this situation will be similar to this kind of mental model so what i can say from here is that there was a bulk shear in this pattern that has happened not just a flow going downward there was a flow downward fashion and in addition this shearing has also taken place only then such a shear zone can be explained can we provide some example of crustal channel flow that has been perceived in a shear zone one of the best example will be the greater himalayan crystalline or the higher himalayan shear zone or the higher himalaya or call it simply the greater himalaya it has been postulated that around 18 million year onward and probably till present there is partially molten material that is pushing through the inclined channel that has produced in the northern part of the higher himalaya migmatites and granites of same age and because of that push because of that crustal channel flow mechanism the shear sense has flipped within the greater himalayan crystalline and this is actually very big subject there has been very big debate many people believe it many people don't believe it there are many questions and concerns some day i hope to discuss about the himalayan tectonics and there i can get into great detail of this debate